chemical inhibitors. Here we have the two examples of chemical inhibitors because there are two types. Chemical inhibitors are chemical molecules, similar to a substrate molecule. They have a chemical shape and structure, and there are two types. There's competitive inhibitors, I've got an example here, and non-competitive inhibitors, the example is here. I'm going to bring back the enzyme, right? And I want you to look at the shape of these two and start to think about maybe formulating something in your mind as to what these terms might mean. Okay, competitive inhibitors, as you can see from this molecule, it has a fairly similar structure to our substrate molecule. That's really important. Because what do we know is important? complementary shapes. That's what facilitates the binding and the speeding up of the reaction for that substrate. Now, the competitive inhibitor, it's not the same shape as the substrate, but it is a similar shape, similar enough to allow it to bind to that active site. As you can see there, not a perfect fit at all, but enough of a complementary shape to allow binding to the active side of that enzyme. The thing is, once that competitive inhibitor binds with that enzyme, the enzyme doesn't recognize it as the substrate. The enzyme can't facilitate the breakdown of that substrate because it is a different molecule. And the inhibitor actually remains bound to that enzyme and cannot be removed. And you can imagine what that would be like. If my hands were enzymes, Okay, and the process that they sped up was removing the lid from a texture. But if you super glued a bowling ball to my hands, I'm not going to be taking the lid off of any textures anytime soon. Right, the bowling ball is your chemical inhibitor, and that's exactly what's going on here. Your competitive inhibitor has blocked the enzyme, it won't be able to speed up the reaction, and that's that's how it affects enzyme activity. Okay, so that's your competitive inhibitor. You've now got your non-competitive inhibitor, right? The name indicates that no, it's not going to compete for the active site. Now for simplicity so far, I've shown you this enzyme and I've kept it simple. Okay, don't freak out, but I'm going to introduce something that you haven't seen before. Enzymes are not as simple as my diagram might indicate. This is an enzyme, and what I'm showing you is that enzymes actually also have an alternative binding site. Not the active site, and it's elsewhere on the enzyme. So it's not our active site here, it's somewhere else on the enzyme, and it's a different shape altogether. Now what can happen sometimes with enzymes is our non-competitive inhibitor, it has no interest in the active site, but it does have a complementary shape to our alternative site. And when it binds with the alternative site, it causes the enzyme to change shape, as you can see here. And now that this enzyme has changed shape, it's warped the shape of the active site that's no longer going to fit with our substrate, so therefore we've prevented the activity of the enzyme without competing for the active site, hence the name non-competitive. This molecule here is not competing with the substrate for the active site. The active site is still vacant, it's just had its shape altered so it can no longer bind with our substrate. So that's how the process of non-competitive inhibition works, binding at an alternative site on the enzyme and preventing the binding of the substrate with the active site.